Welcome back to JA Inspire Virtual. I'm your host, Dr. Troy Podell. Uh, and with me is a very exciting guest. Couldn't be more grateful to have her. Uh, attorney Beth Shore from Fox Rothschild LLP. Uh, Beth is an associate with that law firm where she practices education law, assisting public school districts with any of their education or employment related needs. Previously, she served as a deputy attorney general for the state of New Jersey. Uh, and where she represented the New Jersey Department of Education and New Jersey's state colleges and universities. Beth, thank you so much for being with us today. So thank you, Dr. Podell, for having me here today. So I, I got into law, I, I always kind of thought that I might want to be a lawyer. Um, and, you know, I, I, when I was in high school, I was part of the uh, school's like debate class, and I just really enjoyed that. But, you know, it's funny because what you see on TV of what actually happens in real life. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I ended up going to law school because I really wanted to work to systematically be able to help children. Um, so when I started going into, when, when I entered law school, I thought I was going to leave and, and either do some type of family law or work uh, as a child advocate. Um, but that didn't end up uh, that, that, that didn't end up where, where I am now. Um, I, I left law school and I got my first job out of law school uh, right after the Great Recession, essentially. And I, I got, had an opportunity to join the New Jersey Attorney General's office. And at the time, they, they were looking for assistance in the education uh, practice group. And I thought, well, you know, kids, education, this is something I could get into. And it kind of just you know, went on from there, and I've been doing education law ever since. Terrific. Um, I, I would ask, you know, there's, there's lots of conceptions about being an attorney. Uh, what is it exactly that an attorney does? So, you know, it, it, it's interesting because um, a lot of being an attorney is knowing how to conduct legal research and then analyzing that to put together an answer for your client. And sometimes it might be going to trial. I mean, I, I part of my practice is focused on litigation. So um, appearing at hearings, uh, things like that, which are, I guess, a little more similar to what you would see on TV. But most of my job is getting a question from a client, processing that question, and then um, you know, trying to figure out an answer. Uh, it, it's not always it's not always easy, um, but uh, you know I, I do legal research and then I analyze and then a huge part of it is writing. I never expected I would do so much writing, and I remember being in high school and you know you'd wonder, oh my God, how many pages does this have to be? <laughs> and now I don't even think about that. It's more an issue of you know how can I cut it down because you know length isn't always better, but it's just a, a part of my um, a part of my my job is doing a lot of writing that I couldn't even keep track now of how many pages I've, I've written. So uh, obviously, if you're going to go to, if you're going to want to be a lawyer, it would be really important to get an undergraduate degree. And, you know, a lot of people think that if you are interested in being a lawyer, you should get a degree in like law or crime law and justice or something like that. And you really don't need to do that. You can study whatever you want in college and still go to law school. And that's one of the things about being able to go to law school. It's different than say med school where you need to have a foundation of certain um, science classes and things like that. You know, there is no requirement for, for law school. I think a lot of people tend to go into it with um, degrees in the liberal arts. So you see a lot of like English majors, history majors, political science majors. Um, but you know, there are also people who studied engineering or studied business or studied, you know, Renaissance <laughs> literature. You could really do anything you wanted to do as long as you're interested in it and you do well in college, you can then take those skills and then apply to law school. Um, law school is a, a three-year experience on top of, you know, a four-year college experience. So it seems like a lot of school, um, but at the same time, it kind of, you know, being out of it now um, for a number of years, it feels like it, it just went by in a flash. Beth, what, what sort of advice do you have for, uh, for younger folks that are looking to break into the field of law? If I'm a high school student and I'm, I'm thinking about uh, a career in law, like what, what should I be doing right now? 
so, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, I think the really important thing is to make sure that you, you know, you, you have to, you know, take any opportunity you can to, um, to, to write. And it's not fun. I mean, I know writing is really hard and, I, and I'm sure that it's not something that, um, you know, if you're in school now, it's probably something that can, can be a drag if you have writing assignments, you know, term papers, essays, things like that. But the reality is that, you know, it, it's so important to practice those skills. And it's something that I'm still doing now that, you know, I'm still refining my writing, you know, as time moves on here. And the interesting thing is that simple writing is best um, and I think, you know, I learn a lot by reading other people's writing. That's just one thing that I do. Um, so, you know, just this is like a kind of a basic thing that someone had said to me when I was in high school. Um, when you when you have your, your you know, your your homepage, when you log on to the Internet, um, put up like one of your favorite newspapers and just have it set as the homepage. So every time you go on the, in, you know, online, you know, you kind of see the headlines, you know what's going on in the world. But then the other benefit is that you get to read really clear, concise writing because that's the type of writing that you need to do as a lawyer. And that's the type of writing that will help you be successful really in any job field, but in college and especially in law school, just clear, simple writing. Uh, Attorney Beth Shore, fantastic advice. I'm gonna get, our, uh, get you out of here on this one more question, if you don't mind. Uh, you've got 17 year old Beth Shore by the shoulders. What do you tell her? I think, you know, I was thinking about this before. Um, I think one of the most important things, you know, there's so much pressure, at least I felt a lot of pressure when I was in high school. And I don't know if, if, if some of you are feeling that the same way, um, but, you know, people can kind of get fixated on, well, where am I going to, you know, go to school after high school? And I think the really important thing is that it, it really doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you that you make the most of wherever you are. I mean, I'll tell you, I'm at Fox Rothschild. It's a it's a huge law firm. It's a nationwide law firm, and people come from all over, you know, all different types of backgrounds. You have people who went to Ivy League institutions. You have people who went to who who went to state schools. There are even people involved who you know involved in the firm who went to community colleges. It, it's just the important thing is that you get to where you're going, and then you make the most of the experience, and then you build connections and people who can help you through your life. Um, I'll say that, and I know it's really tough right now, especially considering that, um, you know, we're, 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 we're socially distanced from a lot of people, but, you know, for those of you, especially if you're graduating high school now, you know, keep in touch with your teachers. If you had a particular teacher who was really um, motivating or impactful to you, you know, that's something that I wish I had done better. I had a, a, you know, a few teachers in high school who I just had wonderful relationships with, and, you know, you kind of move on and, you know, Students tend to forget about them a little bit, in, not in the sense um, of their whole life, but just they, they don't talk, so they don't communicate, you know, keep up those relationships. And that's something that would be really helpful as you're going throughout, you know, the next phase of your, of your life, because you'll always find people who will help you. And I'll tell you that, um, you know, people say to find a mentor to kind of help you through this. And it doesn't have to be a formal thing. You just build, you know, keep those relationships um, active, even if it's just like, an email every now and then to let someone know what you're up to, or, you know, a text message. It doesn't have to be hard, but I, I you know, I'll tell you, I have a, um, a mentor from college who was a, a partner at a major international law firm in Washington, DC. And he was one of my professors. He was like in his sixties at the time. He's probably 80 now. And um, I, I still talk to him and, you know, law school is really tough for me. I, I, I found it significantly harder than college and it was really helpful to have someone uh, and, you know, and I have other lawyers in my family, I knew other lawyers, but to have this person who had been so meaningful for me, you know, and, and so helpful to me in college, to have this person who I could talk to when I was feeling down, when I had some questions, when I didn't know, you know, what was going on, going on with, um, you know, looking for uh, summer internship experiences. And it was, it was great to just have that person. And, and I, I still, I still talk to him today. And he asks me what I'm working on. And, you know, he kind of provides a, a little bit of empathy. And he's also, you know, my cheerleader in the background. So I, I strongly recommend that all, you know, all of you, you know, keep those people in your life because they, they, they keep you successful and they keep you grounded. 
Beth, thank you so very much for being with us. It was absolutely wonderful to have you. Uh, and thank you for braving through the technical difficulties. Uh, you're the absolute best. Uh, folks, if you want to uh, find out more about what it is that uh, Beth does, go to foxrothschild.com. Uh, with that, we'll take a brief break uh, and we'll be right back with our next exciting guest. Thank you, Dr. Podell. Good thank luck, you. everyone.